Now in this video, we'll talk about Anycast RP and then also we'll talk about Multicast Source Discovery Protocol. Now before we go ahead with the concept of Anycast RP, first we need to understand what is Anycast, what is exactly Anycast. Now Anycast is a method of sending the multicast streaming or any traffic to any one device within the group. Like, uh, like take an example, you're, you're accessing some website on the internet, let's say I'm going to type some URL path. Now on the internet you have some multiple of servers, web servers hosting the same information. And almost all the devices are configured with the same IP address, let's say the IP address is 50.1.1.1 and 50.1.1.1 and 50.1.1.1 so all the servers are hosting the same service or providing the same service and they are also configured with the same IP IP or IPv6 address and and probably if my user is trying to access the yahoo.com or any specific site and your packet is supposed to reach the 50.1.1.1 and based on the shortest path it's going to reach to any one of the server instead of going to all the devices now, this is what we call as a concept of Anycast. Now, Anycast is a method of sending to any one device within the set and it, it's simply forwarding to the nearest possible device. Now, if that particular nearest possible device is not reachable or it's, it's something going down, then it, it will be forwarded to the next nearest possible server. But at the end, it is going to send to only one device in that particular set. Now the major advantage we get with this is it is going to provide some load balancing and also high availability. Now the load balancing means let's say if there is a user who wants to access 5111 and probably he is going to the nearest possible server and let's say I have a user here he is going to the nearest possible server and the user here is going to the nearest possible server. Now we are placing our servers on different locations and the particular users are going to access the nearest possible yahoo server and based on their based on how they are uh, built or based on the shortest path we can say now it's going to provide some kind of load balancing and also if that particular nearest possible server goes down the traffic is going to be forwarded to the next nearest possible server Now this is the most common implementation you'll find on the internet where each device is going to assign with the same IPv4 or IPv6 addresses. And it's going to send to anyone based on the shortest IGP or PGP path. If any one of the nearest fails, in that case it's going to send to the next nearest device. Now similar kind of concept we are going to use here in case of Anycast RP. Now in the case of Anycast RP also what we are going to do is we are going to configure multiple RPs which are going to use the same IPv4 or IPv6 address. Like in my scenario, let's say the IP address of the RP is 1.1.1.1 and we are going to configure the same IPv4 address to the other RP also. Now based on the, uh, based on the location where my receiver or the source are there, now the source are going to register to the nearest possible RP and the receivers are going to uh, send to the nearest possible RP. So let's say I have a receiver here, they are going to send to the nearest possible RP. And, and if one of the RP goes down, let's say if any one of the RP goes down, then the source can register to the next nearest possible RP, which is going to provide us the RP load sharing as well as the RP failover. Now all the RP in the multicast domain is going to use the same IPv4 or IPv6 addresses, and they are going to maintain the same uh, PIM and join as comma entries. Probably they are going to maintain all the information about. It's going to have a common information between them, and the source or the receivers are going to join to the nearest possible RP, and the messages are sent to the nearest closest RP based on the unicast routing table. But at the end, we are going to assign two or more than two RPs which are going to use the same IPv4 addresses. Now, one of the major concern with the Anycast RP is. Uh, now here, let's say I have configured one RP with 1.1.1.1 and we have configured the same address for both the RPs. Now I have a source here, the source is going to send some PIM register messages to the nearest RP and then I have a receiver here, let's say, now the receiver is going to send some PIM join messages to the nearest possible RP. But now the source cannot know about the receiver because they are they are going to register or they are going to send some messages to the different RPs 
But now the problem is the RP1 should know about this receiver and the RP2 should know about this receiver because they are registering to a different RPs. Now it's more like you know this is more like a separate multicast domain and this is going to be a separate multicast domain and we need a solution to combine these two different multicast domains and the solution is MSDP. Now here what we are going to do is to overcome this issue where the source can register to a different RP and the receiver is going to different RP based on the nearest or the shortest path and to combine these two different uh, PIM domains we use something called multicast source discovery protocol. Now the multicast source discovery protocol is a solution uh, to ensure that the source is going to register to the RP1 and we have a receiver who are going to register to the RP2. MSDP is going to provide a solution where it is going to send this SKMG entries to the next RP by using something called MSDP uh, source active messages. Now this source active messages contains information about the source SKMG entries forwarded to the RP here and then it is forwarded back to the receiver here. Now then the receiver is going to build the shortest path to reach the to reach the source based on that information provided by both the RPs here. Now the concept is very simple here. If you have a source registering to RP1, it's going to build some SKMG entries and the same information will be forwarded to the next RP so that the RP2 also knows about that source SKMG entries. So if you have any receiver who wants to join to that particular source, now the RP no, RP2 knows about that information, it's going to forward it back to the source and the source and the receiver can still send and receive the multicast traffic. That's something like combining two different PIM domains based on the different independent RP concepts. Now initially this concept was developed to have inter-AS multicast where you have a two different uh, inter-AS like different AS probably running autonomous system 100, autonomous system 200 based on the BGP and we are exchanging the multicast traffic between two different autonomous system numbers based on the, based on the uh, BGP implementations. But here we are not going to use something called inter-AS, we are still using intra-AS multicasting. Now all the routers are going to run a common IGP protocol but the only difference is if you have a very big network instead of running a common RP or a backup RP we are going to run different RPs in different domains. Now the main thing is both the RPs are going to use the same IPv4 addresses so the source or the receivers are going to register themselves to the nearest possible RP. And then once they register, the RP information is propagated back to the next RP so that the receivers on the other end of the RP should learn about the source.